Imagine a rusty lump of bronze from 2,000 years ago, suddenly rewriting everything we thought we knew about ancient tech. Pretty wild, right? That's the Antikythera mechanism. And on Joe Rogan's podcast, it's got a chilling twist. Now, when they found that ancient Greek uh, computer thing, mm -hmm. on, what, what is that called? The, the Antikythera anti mechanism. So, what does it do? And it has been determined that that analog computer was used to predict astronomical events. The mystery solved, and it's not good. What could be so bad about cracking an old Greek gadget? Incredibly complex, yeah. and it took a long time for them to figure out what that even is. Yeah. So. Stick around. It's a tale of genius, loss, and some mind-bending questions. To get why this hits so hard, let's rewind to where it all began, way back in the depths of a Greek shipwreck. And then we must consider what's behind it. The Antikythera mechanism unveiled. Picture this. It's 1901, and a group of sponge divers are plunging into the Mediterranean off the tiny island of Antikythera. They're not expecting much, just another day fishing for sea sponges, when they stumble on a Roman shipwreck sunk around 70 BCE. Among the hall of statues, coins, and pottery, they pull up a corroded chunk of bronze and wood about the size of a shoebox. At first, it's just a weird lump, ignored while the shiny statues get all the attention. But then, archaeologist Valerio Stais takes a closer look in 1902 and spots something crazy. Gears. Not just any gears, but a whole system of them packed into this ancient relic. This thing, now called the Antikythera mechanism, isn't some random trinket. It's the world's first known analog computer built by the Greeks around 150 to 100 BCE. Think of it like a steampunk planetarium you crank by hand. It's got 30 bronze gears, some so tiny they're mind-boggling, working together to track the sun, moon, and planets even predicting eclipses and the four-year cycle of the Olympic Games. The front's got dials with pointers, the back's got spirals mapping out lunar cycles, and it's all stuffed with inscriptions in ancient Greek. This wasn't just a tool, it was a masterpiece of engineering, showing off math and astronomy skills that make you wonder what else those old Greeks were up to. Fast forward to today, and it's housed in the National Archaeological Museum in Athens, split into 82 fragments after years of corrosion. Scientists have been obsessed with it, using X-rays and CT scans to peek inside. They've found gears within gears, some with teeth counts like 223 that match the moon's eclipse cycles. It's not just impressive, it's spooky how precise it is. But here's the kicker, nothing like it shows up again for over a thousand years. So what happened? Did the tech just vanish? That's the kind of question that keeps you up at night, and it's exactly what Joe Rogan and his guest dove into. But how did this ancient gizmo end up on Joe's radar, and what's got everyone so rattled? Let's jump into that chat and find out. Joe Rogan and Graham Hancock weigh in. So, picture Joe Rogan perched in his studio on April 23, 2019, for episode number 1284 of The Joe Rogan Experience. Across from him is Graham Hancock, the guy who spent decades digging into ancient mysteries with books like Fingerprints of the Gods. These two are a match made in podcast heaven. Joe's got his wide-eyed curiosity, and Graham's got the wild theories. They're not just chatting about the weather, they're tackling the Antikythera mechanism. In a clip you can still find online, Graham calls it an ancient Greek computer thing, a navigational device geared cogged system to track planet movements and time, used for figuring out location. Joe's all ears, probably leaning forward like, wait, what? Graham paints it as this lost marvel, over 2,000 years old, maybe from 500 BCE, if you stretch the timeline a bit loose, though most peg it closer to 150 BCE. He's hyping it up as proof of skills we've forgotten like ancient GPS for sailors or stargazers. Joe chimes in, marveling at how it's not fully understood as 
which is true. Back then, even with x-rays, the full picture was fuzzy. What's cool here is how they riff off each other. Graham's big on lost civilizations, and he hints this gadget might tie into that. Like, who builds something this slick and then lets it disappear? Joe's nodding along, throwing out his classic, that's insane, man, vibe. They don't quote exact lines we can pin down without a full transcript, but you can bet they're digging into why it's such a big deal. Graham likely ties it to his idea of a sophisticated past we've lost track of, maybe even joking about how it's wilder than aliens. Joe's probably asking, how'd they even make this back then? A question that still stumps experts. The not good part? It's not explicit in the clips, but you can feel it brewing. Graham's whole shtick is that finding stuff like this means we've missed something huge. Maybe a collapse of knowledge after the Greeks. Joe's right there with him, feeding that unease. It's less about the mechanism itself and more about what its existence says. We had geniuses back then, and somehow, we dropped the ball. Speaking of dropping the ball, why does solving this mystery feel like a gut punch? Let's unpack that next. Why, not good, hits hard. Okay, so the Antikythera mechanism's mystery is finally solved and it's not good. What's up with that? On the surface, cracking an ancient puzzle sounds like a win. High fives all around, right? But dig into what Joe and Graham might have meant, and it's less a victory lap and more a slow head shake. The solved part comes from science catching up, recent studies showing it tracked planets like Venus with insane accuracy. But the not good, that's where the story gets juicy and a little dark. Think about it. This thing's a time capsule of brilliance. It's got gears mimicking the 462-year cycle of Venus, a detail nailed down in a 2021 scientific report study. That's not just smart. It's next level for 150 BCE. Graham Hancock's probably leaning into this on the podcast, saying it's proof we lost something big. Maybe he's picturing a world where this tech could have led to clocks or machines centuries sooner, but instead, we hit a reset button. Joe's reaction? You can almost hear him go, Man, that's depressing. The not good vibe isn't about the mechanism failing. It worked like a charm. It's about us failing it. Imagine finding out your ancestors were rocket scientists, but you're stuck reinventing the wheel. That's the sting. Researchers like Adam Wojcik have pointed out how weird it is that nothing similar pops up later. Where'd the know-how go? Was it war, like the Roman takeover, or just a culture that didn't pass it on? Either way, it's a bummer to think we had this head start and blew it. And here's a wild twist. What if it's not good, because it shakes our comfy history books? Graham loves this angle poking holes in the idea that progress is a straight line. If the Greeks were this advanced, what else are we wrong about? It's not just a gadget, it's a dare to rethink everything. Joe's probably chuckling nervously like, dude, you're freaking me out. But that's the hook that keeps you listening. To really feel the weight of this, let's zoom out and see how crazy this tech actually was. Ancient tech that blows our minds. Let's get real for a sec. The Antikythera mechanism isn't just cool, it's bonkers. We're talking about a handheld device from over 2,000 years ago that could map the cosmos like a pro. Picture those Greeks, Toga and all, cranking this thing to figure out where Mars would be next month. It's not some stone tablet or crude sundial. It's a machine with gears so precise they'd make a modern watchmaker sweat. How'd they pull this off? First off, the engineering's wild. The biggest gear, part of Fragment A, has 223 teeth, matching the sorrow cycle for eclipses. 18 years, 11 days. That's not guesswork, that's math. They used Babylonian astronomy tricks, like dividing circles into 360 degrees, 
and mixed it with Greek brain power from folks like Hipparchus. The front dial showed the zodiac and Egyptian calendar, while the back had spirals tracking lunar phases. It even had a little ball for the moon's phases, black and white, spinning as you turned the crank. This wasn't a toy. It was a portable universe. Now, picture the craftsmanship. Those gears? Tiny, some with teeth you'd need a magnifying glass to count. X-ray scans show they're cut with eerie precision, maybe using tools we haven't even found yet. Scientists argue over whether they had lathes or just mad hand skills, but either way, it's nuts. And get this, inscriptions on it list planetary cycles, like Venus at 462 years, confirmed by CT scans in 2016. That's not just smart, it's spooky, like they knew more than we give them credit for. What blows my mind most is the context. This wasn't a one-off fluke. The shipwreck had luxury goods, statues, glassware, hinting it belonged to someone rich or important, maybe a scientist or noble. Was it a navigation tool for sailors, a teaching aid, or a status symbol? We don't know, but it screams sophistication. Yet after this, zilch. No Roman knockoffs, no medieval upgrades. It's like finding a smartphone in a cave and then seeing everyone go back to smoke signals. Joe and Graham probably geeked out over this. Joe saying, that's unreal, while Graham nods, all serious, tying it to his lost civilization vibe. But hold up, how do we even know all this? Let's dive into the science that cracked it open. Science cracks the code. All right, so how do we go from a rusty blob to mystery solved? It's all about the geeks with x-rays and big brains. Since the Antikythera mechanism surfaced in 1901, it's been a puzzle, literally, with 82 pieces scattered like a jigsaw from hell. Early on, folks like Valerio Sties saw the gears and went, huh? But it wasn't until the 21st century that we really got the scoop, thanks to tech that it makes sci-fi writers jealous. In 2005, the Antikythera Mechanism Research Project kicked into high gear. They hauled out microfocus X-ray CT scanners, think hospital machines on steroids, and blasted the fragments with rays to see inside without breaking them. What they found was nuts. 30 gears, some so corroded you'd miss them, wired together in a way that screamed purpose. They teamed up with Hewlett Packard for polynomial texture mapping too, lighting up tiny inscriptions we couldn't read before. Suddenly, we're decoding Greek text about planetary cycles, like Saturn's 442-year loop, buried in the bronze. Fast forward to 2021, and a team from University College London, led by Tony Freeth, drops a bombshell in scientific reports. They've got a new model, a full reconstruction of how it showed the Sun, Moon, and all five known planets. They figured out the gearing, using prime numbers like 7 and 17 to share gears across planets, making it compact yet dead on. Freeth's team says it fits all the evidence, and they're not kidding. X-rays back it up, showing a cosmos display with rings and pointers, just like the inscriptions hinted. But here's the catch. Could the Greeks actually build it? Some, like Adam Wojcik, Wonder if the concentric tubes for planet outputs were doable back then without modern lathes. It's a fair question. Nothing else this slick has turned up. Still, the math checks out, and recreations prove it works. Joe probably ate this up on the podcast, geeking out over how science peeled back the layers, while Graham might have mused. See? They were geniuses. Now that we've got the how, let's wrestle with the why. Did this genius really just vanish? Lost knowledge or hidden secrets? So we've got this unreal device, solved, mapped out, a total game changer. But then what? Why is it the only one of its kind? That's where the Antikythera mechanism gets under your skin. Joe and Graham likely chewed on this hard in episode number 1284, and it's a rabbit hole worth chasing. Did the knowledge die out? Or is there more we're missing? Let's start with the obvious. It's a singleton. 
No other ancient gear machines pop up in digs. Experts like Wojcik scratch their heads, asking why, if the Greeks had this tech, we don't see clocks or sequels later. One theory's simple, war and chaos. The Romans rolled in around 146 BCE, torching Greek cities like Corinth, a possible origin point. Maybe the craftsmen got wiped out, or their workshops trashed. Bronze was pricey too, often melted down for swords or statues, so maybe these gadgets got recycled into history's dumpster. Or how about this? It was a secret. The shipwreck's loot, fancy statues, coins from Pergamon, suggests this was no fisherman's toy. Could it have been a guarded tool for elites like navigators or priests, never meant to spread? Graham Hancock's all over this angle, probably telling Joe, this was top secret stuff. He might tie it to his big idea, a lost civilization with skills we've forgotten. Joe's nodding, maybe joking. What, like ancient Area 51? It's not crazy. The mechanisms tied to big names like Archimedes or Hipparchus, geniuses who could have kept it hush-hush. But here's a twist. What if it's not lost, just overlooked? Divers hit the wreck again in 2012 and 2015, pulling up more artifacts, pottery. A bronze disc with a bull. That disc is not part of the mechanism, probably furniture decor, but it shows the site's still spilling secrets. Could other devices be out there, buried in mud or mislabeled in museums? The 2022 vice piece pegged its start date to 204 BCE via inscriptions, hinting there's more to find. You've got to wonder, what's still hiding? And if that's not enough to keep you hooked, let's peek at other ancient head-scratchers that vibe with this. Similar mysteries in history. The Antikythera mechanism's not the only old-school stunner that makes you go, wait, what? History's littered with stuff that feels out of place. And since Joe and Graham love a good mystery, let's roll through a few that echo this vibe without stepping on what we've already covered. Take the Baghdad battery from around 250 BCE in Mesopotamia. It's a clay jar with a copper tube and iron rod. Hook it upright, and it might have made a tiny zap of electricity. Archaeologists argue over whether it powered anything or just held scrolls, but it's weirdly advanced either way. Joe's probably riffed on this with other guests, picturing ancient Iraqis juicing up lights or shocking each other for laughs. It's not a computer like our Greek gadget, but it hints at tech we didn't expect. Then there's the Nazca Lines in Peru, giant geoglyphs scratched into the desert between 500 BCE and 500 CE. Some are miles long, spirals, monkeys, a hummingbird, visible only from the air. Were they for gods, irrigation, or something else? Graham's type would say aliens. He's hinted at wilder stuff. But even sober scientists admit it's a feat of planning. No gears here, just raw human effort, yet still a puzzle screaming for answers. Or how about the Roman dodecahedrons? These hollow, 12-sided bronze objects, dated 200 to 400 CE, keep popping up across Europe. No one knows what they're for. Candle holders, dice, surveyor tools. They're not machines, but they're crafted with skill that feels oddly specific. Like the mechanism, they're a one-off enigma, leaving us guessing 